Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here for the first episode of 2021. Happy New Year to everybody. Today we are going through our delivery and production forecast for Tesla for Q4, which of course means for the total year 2020 as well. Some quick news here before we get into these estimates. Tesla has updated the design studio for the Made in China Model Y, and they say that deliveries will begin in January 2021. They've also updated pricing. There's some new changes to the interior, and it is looking like Tesla has already produced at least a few hundred of these Made in China Model Ys in Q4. So we'll probably talk more about that in the next episode, but just wanted to make people aware of that in case you hadn't seen that news yet. All right, so moving on to Q4 delivery and production numbers, just as a quick preface before we get into any of this, none of this is investing advice. This is me just doing my best to get a reasonable estimate out there. And even more importantly than the numbers is just to discuss sort of the pathway for Tesla achieving the numbers, because that context is what's really important as we think about 2021 and beyond. Of course, we're all very curious to see if Tesla can hit 500,000 deliveries for the year. That would require Q4 deliveries of 181,000 and 20 vehicles. Regardless of any analyst estimates or facts at consensus estimates or anything like that, I do think the expectation is for Tesla to hit that number. And even though that represents incredible growth both year over year and quarter over quarter, I think if Tesla doesn't quite get there, it will be seen as a bit of a disappointment, though I'm sure that would be shaken off quickly. And if Tesla exceeds that, I think that's going to be seen as a win. All right, so when are we supposed to actually get these final production and delivery numbers from Tesla? Well, usually that's within three days of quarter end. So if you're watching the video version here, you can see all of Tesla's historical releases and how many days it has taken them to release that information from the end of the quarter. In 13 of those quarters, so 57% of the time, Tesla has released the numbers two days after quarter end. Nine of those quarters, 39% of the time, it has been three days. And then there was one time back in Q1 of 2016, Tesla released the numbers four days after quarter end. It does look like they've been getting a little bit quicker with these releases, similar to earnings. Since the start of 2018, eight of the 11 quarters have been released within two days of quarter end. On the other hand, if we look at specifically fourth quarters, which I've highlighted here, you can see that four of those five quarters have been released three days after quarter end. So it does seem to take a little bit more time for Q4 on average. And then looking at Q4 2020 specifically, it's a little bit weird because the second and third days fall over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So Tesla has actually never released the quarterly numbers on a Saturday. If we go back a few years though, there have been four occasions where Tesla has released the numbers on Sunday. So putting all this together, I think we'll see it three days after quarter end this Sunday, January 3rd. All right, that out of the way, let's hop into our production estimates. Remember, I always start with production and then work into deliveries. I care way more about production. I think Tesla is largely production constrained. As we've talked about, it's not as simple as either demand or production constraint. There are regional variances, there are product line variances, but at the end of the day, I think if Tesla could build more cars, they could sell more cars. So we'll start with production here and then we'll talk about deliveries. You may remember that I went through my early forecast this quarter back on November 11th, and at that time I was outlining path for Tesla to potentially achieve 200,000 vehicles produced in the quarter. My numbers have come down since then, unfortunately, but we're gonna walk through why that is. Again, the context here is what's important. So looking at our spreadsheet here, and if you are an audio listener, I'd recommend this one on video. The link will be in the show notes. But if you haven't seen this spreadsheet before, each row is a different period of time. So maybe a quarter, maybe a month, maybe a couple of weeks when there was a production shutdown. And then the columns divide production by factory. So we have our total production, our Fremont production, our Shanghai production. And then that's broken out to both calendar weeks and calendar days, because that becomes very important when we do have those shutdowns. Everything in gray here is a known number. That's an actual that we have. Everything in orange we can be highly confident in. That is based on reports out of China and then worked back into in some cases. Everything in blue, similar there. Stuff that we've deduced from other places that we can be highly confident in as well. And then yellow, those are the projections. So as we look into Q4, we'll start off with Shanghai, since we do have reports of monthly production there. Since we've last talked about it, the number I've really been waiting for is November production reports. We did finally get that about two days ago. And that's been reported to be 21,534 vehicles. So if we look at the weekly production rate there, that's actually quite a bit less than it was in October, 5,025 per week in November versus 5,178 in October. So when I last went through this forecast in November, I actually projected about 23,000 out of Shanghai in November versus the roughly 21,500 we're seeing here. We didn't see that production continue to increase like I had hoped. Because of that, I've also dropped my December production forecast down to about 5,100 per week. That would be essentially November's production rate, plus maybe a few hundred Model Ys. 
That puts my Shanghai December forecast at about 22,600 vehicles, bringing total Q4 Shanghai to just over 67,000 vehicles. That's about 3,400 vehicles less than I had previously forecast. So if Tesla is going to hit 500,000 for the year, obviously they need a huge jump in production and deliveries in Q4. Here is where we're seeing a big part of that. That 67,000 in Q4 from Shanghai would compare to just over 37,000 in Q3. So about a 30,000 vehicle increase that we can be pretty highly confident in now that we have October and November numbers. If Tesla can hit these numbers, that'll put them at 154,000 for the year out of Shanghai. All right, moving on to Fremont here, we get a little bit less confident because we don't have those monthly reports and we also have multiple product lines. We'll start with S and X. That's probably the easiest. If we look at production over the last you know, couple of years, Tesla has really ranged in normal non-shutdown quarters, anywhere from about 14,000 to 18,000 S and X produced, but they have produced at much higher levels in the past and they do list their production capacity at 22,500 per quarter. So this is one area where I think Tesla has had that demand constraint, especially for the Model S since volume production of the Model 3. But in Q4, we did see about a $10,000 price drop on the Model S, so I expect a strong quarter here. But we did also learn that Tesla has shut down the S and X production lines for about the last week of the quarter, so that'll reduce the production numbers a bit. That being said, I am still expecting about 18,000. I think that's pretty achievable, though it is about 1,000 units lower than my last forecast just due to that production shutdown at the end of the quarter. Next then we've got Fremont Model 3 and Fremont Model Y. We'll start with the three. I think here we've seen relatively consistent production excluding shutdowns of about 4,400 per week for the Model 3 over the last couple of quarters. That has been noticeably weaker than what Tesla actually peaked at. So if we look at our chart here, we can see that it actually was up at one point, Q4 of 2019, at about 6,500 Model 3s per week. But Tesla has seemed to pull that down with the introduction of the Model Y and of course the three in Shanghai. So my forecast here is actually pretty similar to what it was back in November. I'm projecting 58,400 Model 3s produced out of Fremont this quarter. So that's a production rate of about 4,400 per week. Definitely something that should be achievable for Tesla. We did have that bit of a refresh this quarter. Maybe that reduced production slightly as they converted over. But of course, Tesla would have planned for this, and I don't think the changes would have been major enough to cause any significant downtime. Finally then for Model Y, I think the best way is to continue to look at sort of the VIN range that we're seeing delivered this quarter. So Troy Tesla, shout out to him, he's got a great tracker there where we can see those VIN ranges by month. So the way I like to think of those is that the highest VIN that we see delivered, that puts a ceiling on our total production because if there's, you know, no VIN 150,000, obviously Tesla couldn't have produced 150,000 Model Ys. The same logic doesn't work as well for a floor because Tesla could have skipped a range of VINs or something like that, but I think using that range is probably our best bet and probably led us to pretty good estimates for Q2 and Q3. Now Tesla only shows us the combined Model Y and Model 3 production numbers, we don't get them broken out, so even looking back these are still estimates in terms of the split, but if we look at this tracker for June, the last month of Q2, we can see a VIN range from 2000 all the way up to 23000 that led me to an estimate of maybe 11,000 or so Model Ys produced. Then if we look at Q3, we're looking at September. There we can see a VIN range of 32,000 to 59,000. So from there we could say, okay, maybe a conservative midpoint, assuming there is maybe a few skipped VINs in there, could be total production of 44,000. If we subtract the 11,000 already produced, that would give us maybe 33,000 left for Q3. For Q4 then, we're looking at December. We can see a VIN range of 68,000 all the way up to 99,000. So a sort of conservative midpoint, which to me is taking where we really start to see a lot more VINs starting to be delivered. I put that at maybe 84,000. If that's the case, adding the 44,000 from Q2 and Q3, then maybe Q4 production ends up being around 40,000 vehicles. Throughout the forecast, this is probably the lowest area of confidence because it is building on those estimates. Since Tesla doesn't give us the Model Y Model 3 breakout, versus a lot of our other stuff is built on actuals. This is also the area where I'm seeing the biggest drop from my November forecast. I put 53,000 in at that point rather than 40,000, which remember the logic there had previously been based on the Model 3 ramp up, which went from about 29,000 vehicles produced in one quarter all the way up to 53,000 produced the next quarter during that ramp. So for the Model Y to be based on the Model 3, as well as Tesla's real second attempt at ramping up, I figured they could at least achieve that. But from the VIN ranges, I just don't think we're quite getting there. And I think probably the reason for that is that compared to the Model 3 ramp up, Tesla now has plans to manufacture the Model Y in Shanghai, in Berlin, 
in Texas. So at this point in the Model Y ramp up in Fremont, they're probably focused more on cost efficiencies rather than just raw production. Because with Model Y production coming from all those factories next year, they just don't need to push Fremont as hard for the Model Y. So putting those together, my 18,000 S and X, 58,400 Model 3, and 40,000 Model Y, that's putting my total Fremont production in Q4 at about 116,400 vehicles, add in the 67,000 from Shanghai, and my total Q4 production forecast is 183,479 vehicles. For the full year of 2020, that would put Tesla's total vehicle production at just over 513,000. That Q4 production number would be a 75% increase year over year, and about 40,000 more vehicles produced in Q4 than Q3, a 27% increase sequentially. That giant increase is coming from two places, Shanghai and Model Y, which if we go back to Tesla's Q3 earnings report, we can see that we're on the right track. When discussing their goal of achieving 500,000 vehicles produced and delivered, they say, quote, while achieving this goal has become more difficult, delivering half a million vehicles in 2020 remains our target. Achieving this target depends primarily on quarter over quarter increases in Model Y and Shanghai production, end quote. Flipping back to my forecast then, we can see that from Fremont Model 3, S, and X, I'm only projecting an increase there of about 2,000 units, and then we're seeing about a 37,000 unit increase for Model Y and Shanghai combined. So that's exactly what Tesla said. There was also one other clue that they left us in Q3. They said that specifically about Fremont production, that quote, production should reach full capacity toward the end of this year or beginning of next year, end quote. They then list Fremont production capacity as 90,000 Model S and X, and 500,000 Model 3 and Model Y. On a weekly basis, that would be about 9,500 per week. Tesla in Q3, between Model 3 and Model Y out of Fremont, produced about 6,900 per week. My forecast here has Model 3 and Model Y from Fremont at about 7,500 per week, so significantly below that annualized rate that Tesla says they hope to be able to achieve by the end of this year or early next year. So let's say it ends up being the latter, early next year when they finally achieve that 9,500 per week rate. And let's say they got to maybe 9,000 per week at the end of this year. If they went from 6,900 per week in Q3 to 9,000 per week at the end of Q4, well, the midpoint of that, if that ramp was linear, would be just under 8,000 per week. And again, here my forecast is 7,500 per week. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm actually a bit low on this production forecast for Model Y and Model 3 from Fremont. If Tesla did hit 8,000 per week on those two out of Fremont, that would be another 6,500 or 7,000 vehicles added to this forecast. And again, because of my lack of confidence in the Model Y number, that wouldn't be too surprising. But if I don't have much confidence, I'd rather err on the side of being conservative in that case. All right, so that's production. Tesla easily clearing 500,000 for the year on the production line under that forecast. But Tesla only needed 170,000 vehicles produced to hit 500,000. Versus for deliveries, again, they need over 181,000 vehicles delivered to get to that number. This then comes down to inventory and whether Tesla can use that inventory to compensate for the vehicles that are essentially just going to be stuck in the supply chain that are produced in the final weeks or days of the quarter because you're always going to have some fixed amount of cars that you've produced but just simply can't get to a customer before the end of the quarter. Each quarter in their quarterly report, Tesla discloses this inventory number through days of supply, which is calculated by dividing that quarter's deliveries by 75 working days the resulting number would be one day of supply, and then you just divide the total amount of new inventory you have by that number, and that'll give you your total days of supply. So I put that into a chart here for the last five quarters, and we can see that Tesla's end of quarter inventory has ranged from 15,000 vehicles at the end of Q4 last year, all the way up to about 30,000 vehicles at the end of Q1 this year. On average, over the last five quarters, it's been about 23,000 vehicles. At the end of Q3, Tesla reported 14 days of supply, that equals about 26,000 vehicles. So even though that 14 days of supply is relatively low because delivery amounts are increasing, the raw number of vehicles they have is actually pretty high, about 3,000 vehicles more than they had at the end of Q3 last year. In Q4 last year, Tesla's inventory declined from 23,000 to begin the quarter to about 15,000 to end the quarter, so about an 8,500 unit reduction, and down from 18 days of inventory to just 10 at the end of Q4 last year. So looking at this in more detail, beginning the quarter with 26,000 vehicles, I do think Tesla had enough there that even with some vehicles being stuck in the supply chain more because the production rate is higher at the end of the quarter, I do think Tesla started with enough that that inventory number is actually going to be reduced this quarter, and that's another way of saying that deliveries would outpace production. 
I don't think it'll be quite the 8,500 unit reduction that we saw last year, but around half that wouldn't surprise me. So maybe 3,000 to 4,000 vehicles will settle on 3,500. And that would put my delivery forecast based on my production forecast at 186,979 vehicles. And that puts total 2020 at just under 506,000 vehicles delivered. That would have Tesla achieving their original annual guidance despite the pandemic. Remember, over last weekend, there was a leaked email from Elon Musk pushing Tesla to achieve that 500,000 delivery number. Based on the words in that email, I said at the time that I thought Elon Musk already thought that was pretty much a lock, and I think this estimate would fit well with that interpretation. This would give Tesla a 6,000 vehicle cushion, which over the course of the quarter, they would have averaged about 2,000 vehicles delivered per day. But of course, those deliveries are going to be more heavily concentrated in the final days of the quarter. So even if they were delivering, you know, three or 4,000 per day in those final days, this sort of number would have given Tesla one to two days of cushion of hitting 500,000. So I think at the beginning of the quarter, they were confident. I think they knew they had some cushion. I think when Elon Musk sent that email, he was confident. I think a number like this would be enough to give him that confidence at that point in time. So I think looking at the numbers alone feels pretty good. And then when we bring in some of these other things that we can pick up on, it would fit with those as well. So I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts in the comments. I'm hoping I'm actually a little bit low on this forecast, but we'll have the numbers soon enough. And again, hopefully this provides some context for when those numbers do come out. But that will wrap it up for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you when the delivery and production report comes out. Thank you.